the, the overarching theme of the conference is courage. And there is a clear link between courage and collective work. Because working together, working collectively, sometimes really needs courage. It sounds trivial, but in many cases it's not that easy to work together with others. Because you're leaving your comfort zone, you're interacting with people coming from maybe other sectors, in particular when the corporates are coming together with non-profits, so you also have to leave stereotypes behind. So it needs courage, but I can assure you it's worth it. So be courageous and work together, work collectively. Um, and talking about partnerships, you see I'm not alone here, so I have Jose Perra with me from United Way, because I'm really thrilled to let you know that we have just recently started a collaboration venture. So we initiated United Way Germany as a new institution fostering collective impact in Germany and also facilitating engagement on community level between different sectors. So that's great that we are together discussing with you the idea of collective impact. We are very much focused on Germany, but nevertheless, whenever you're thinking about impact, you are, in many cases, also think globally. Um, and so that's why I'm so glad that we have a partner with United Way. So we are a local champion, knowing our landscape very well, knowing the players quite well, but also with United Way, we can expand with our impact globally. And we are also using tools which have been established in other regions, like collective impact, and trying to implement them in Germany. Individuals that want to create change in the community are engaging them in the work. So, volunteerism, advocacy, and giving. So, those are the three things in terms of actually getting people engaged. And we, we have about 10 billion people around the world that actually work with United Way. The other thing is that we are known to be a partner of corporates around the world. We have about 70,000. Uh, corporate partnerships around the world um, and they spread, as I said, across the 40 countries that we work in. As a theme for the discussion we're about to have, and that is Nelson Mandela. But Nelson Mandela said there is no passion to be found in playing small, in setting for a life that is less than the one you're capable of living. I think that applies to all of us as individuals, but it also applies to corporations and the impact that they can have in this. So just to give you a sense of what we want to do is now we are walking you through five different leaders. What we have seen make a collective impact and good corporate leadership. 55% of consumers are, are willing to pay more for products, from companies that are committed to their communities. That not only from social good, but also from an environmental perspective. If you are not true to your mission, you need to be who you are as an organization. You need to be true to who you are. You need to do what you say you can to do. If organizations just do it as a marketing technique or a or spin, Consumers will see it very, very quickly. So it will do more damage than good. So it's important that when you engage in corporate social responsibility, that upfront you are strategic and are committed in the long term to the change you're trying to create in the community. The customers expect you to engage in the community. And today, so do your employees. The employees have a high expectation for you as an employer that you give back to your community, and not just give back as in make a couple of donations, but actually engage. Um, and I would encourage you to think, share that. There's value for you as an organization because of the benefit you get from the community, but there should be a benefit in terms of your engagement in the community and how it makes a contribution to create a strong community. That leads to another point. It comes with costs. And let me say that very clearly at the beginning. A corporate is not an altruistic organization. So it's different from a philanthropist or from a foundation. And that means whenever you are spending resources, 
You have to justify it towards your shareholders. Um, and that means that you're basically working on two different dimensions. One thing is, and we just heard about that, you have to have an honest interest to achieve social impact for society. That's forgiven. That's something you have to achieve. But at the same time, it's completely okay and even necessary to be sustainable in the way how you work as a corporate that you achieve benefits for your corporates directly. And here I would like to go a little bit more into detail. Um, so how can you achieve the social case, how we call it, but also the business case? And many of you, and probably it's not by accident that we are on the, on the conference for communication, think of PR and branding. And that's for sure one of the drivers for being a corporate citizen. But there are more reasons and sometimes even more close to the core business to get engaged for communities and for society. And I don't want to run you through all the different points, so this is a survey which shows the different reasons and arguments how you can achieve benefits from being a corporate citizen. Um, so as I said, of course, it's, it's branding, it's PR, it's related to also demands and requests from the customers. But there's also the internal perspective, meaning, so for being attractive for new hires. Um, so this is something which becomes even more relevant when we're talking about the war for talent, etc. It also leads to the fact that the loyalty of your employers is increasing because everybody wants to work for an organization, for a company, which is honestly doing something for society. And then, and these are the parts which I think even more interesting, is if you do it in a really smart way, then you have a direct connect to your core business. And about 25% of organizations or companies report back that they have developed new business ideas, new cases, due to the experience they made throughout the work they have done with nonprofits and the social sector. And that's quite interesting. Um, and there are reasons for that. Because you're very close to real urgent issues. And in many cases, out of these issues, you identify new ideas how you can serve those issues. In particular, when you apply corporate voluntary, you get skills for your employees, they might also use them for your business activities. Um, and just to give you one example, which makes it, I think, quite tangible, um, there is a partnership between Immobilien Scout 24 and Sozialwelt. Sozialwelt is an organization active in the field of disabilities. And due to this partnership, they realize that there is an unmet need also for this customer base, and in general we're talking about 7 million people with disabilities. So that led to the situation that Immobilien Scout developed new tools and services for this time. So here you can see out of a collaboration between a non-profit and the corporate, they developed new business cases. And this is what makes strategic corporate citizenship. So it's not just about writing a check. It's not just about press clearance. It's really about integrating it into your core businesses. That leads to the third part, so really think big and think collectively. Just saw the 2017 uh, scorecard report, and if you go through this, uh, what you will see is a lot of measurement, because they are holding themselves accountable to the outcomes that they create in the community. But this work was not made possible by, by one organization, there's thousands of people from volunteers, individual volunteers, to institutions that are actually being involved. There's over 100 institutions that are actually part of this uh, uh, network now. And, and you'll see from the results that there's been some tremendous change. Out of the seven key areas where they wanted to have a, uh, a movement in indicators, five have been successful in. So don't believe every time it's going to be successful. They're going to be, you're going to have to continue to adapt and change your strategies. But at the very least, they're seeing much more movement in, in, in improvements than they have in the past. Just to give you two examples, uh, eighth grade math proficiency in that particular region went up by over 10% over the three years that they've now been working together. That was one of the key measurements. The other one was high school graduation. They wanted to improve graduation. The graduation rates were at 80%. They've now moved that up to 84%. It doesn't sound like a lot, but it's a 4% uh, 
from 80 to 84 is actually quite a big move in a, in a system of that nature. So, United Way's role there is really to be the backbone. It doesn't try and compete with the organizations that are in, in the community. It actually brings them to create, together and holds everybody accountable for the uh, execution and the change we're trying to create. So, what we encourage you to do is you think about your, your corporate social responsibilities, see where the opportunities for you to actually integrate into a bigger discussion rather than just getting off and uh, doing one, one of uh, interventions. We're trying also to use such experiences for the German landscape. And Walk the Talk is not just the name United Way Germany, but we want to see it. And we are currently um, initiating a collective impact project in the field of youth unemployment. Just, just a few words about that. Even though we are doing economically wide world in Germany, youth unemployment is a huge issue in Germany as well. So we have roughly 300,000 young people who are failing to make the transition from school into jobs. Um, and that's a severe issue. And like in the case we just heard, there are many institutions trying to tackle this issue. Schools, corporates, job centers, not-profits on various stages, but many of them are also operating very isolated. So it's a quite fragmented world. And so again, this is the ideal environment to introduce the idea of collective impact, to, to align all these different activities, taking the young people, the beneficiaries, into the center, and then to see how you can steer and officer them through the system. Um, and this is what we want to do now in several cities in Germany. We are bringing together partners from all sectors, so from the corporate world, from the non-profits, from also the government institutions, and working on this issue. It's it's co-leadership. So although you have an organisation like uh, like Fenea or United Way that are playing the backbone role, is we are co-leading these these efforts. So a lot of times, so in the case of Salt Lake City. There's actually a leadership committee that's made up of partners that makes decisions on how we move forward. So the decision making is you don't give up anything when you become part of a coalition like this. As a matter of fact, you hopefully gain by having more uh, more capacity and uh, being able to scale through what you're trying to do. Make sure that you work with people that actually understand the particular issue that you're trying to, to tackle. And when you bring partnerships together um, in a collective sense, let's make sure that each one actually has something to look to that coalition. One of the key things we do, as I mentioned earlier, is we engage uh, large numbers of people. So 10, million, 10 million people actually engage through the United Way. As we know, the, the challenge today with uh, technology or the opportunity with technology is that you can actually engage those people much more efficiently than you have in the past. We as United Way, our understanding of technology is about that deep. So what did we do about a year ago? We realized that we needed to, to, to have a better way to engage individuals. So we partnered with Salesforce. And yesterday, as a matter of fact, at Dreamforce, we actually launched a platform but they've created the platform, we have the content, we have the expertise in what goes on the community, and together we can now actually give the community a platform that they can engage through. Most of you are probably not the most patient people, but I know there are people coming from the communication arena, um, so that's probably not one of your strengths, but please be patient. Um, and there are many reasons for being patient in this field. So A, we just heard that to really sustainably tackle social issues is not a trivial task. So you need to have a long breath to achieve impact. I think it's a good sign that we are coming together also in the context of this conference to talk about impact because this again shows that we have to bring expertise from different fields, professions, but also sectors together to, to achieve impact. When I'm seeing who is working together from all different sectors to make a little change to achieve impact, that's giving me a lot of positive energy, and so I'm quite confident, even seeing all these challenges, that collectively and together we will change the world to a better place and have impact together. So, thank you very much.